Considering the levels of organization that are relevant to the human body, we want to start with the chemical level of organization, which would be the lowest or simplest level from which everything else is composed. With the knowledge of how atoms bond with each other, we want to move to briefly consider chemical reactions that might be involved in anatomy and physiology. Three types of reactions that will be meaningful in the work that we look at in this course are depicted here in a textual representation. So the first thing is synthesis. When two components come together to make a new combined form, that's synthesis. The opposite of that would be decomposition, when a larger thing is broken down into its constituent parts. Um, and then the third one is when we have some sort of exchange. We take two pieces and uh, rearrange their component parts together. Now in this example they have notebook plus worm yields note plus bookworm. Um, it wouldn't make very much sense in the textual representation here, but we could just as easily have an exchange reaction with bookworm and notebook. Uh, if we have notebook and bookworm and we take their parts apart and put them back together, we would form uh, rearrangements of that. And since there's book in both of those examples, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense textually. But uh, we could have compound AB and compound CD and we could have an exchange reaction there so that we end up with compounds AC and BD, which is often a kind of exchange reaction we see. The synthesis and decomposition reactions that were just represented above with the textual examples are actually re reactions that we're going to see quite a bit. The synthesis reaction that we'll see most often falls into the uh, category of what are called dehydration synthesis reactions, which is when two individual molecules come together to make a larger molecule. And this is the kind of thing we usually see in the chaining reactions of making chains of repeating units called polymers. So one unit of that change is called a monomer. Those monomers will have attached to them uh, oxygen-hydrogen groups. And so if an oxygen and a hydrogen from one and a hydrogen from the other come out to make the bond across the second oxygen in those two OH groups, the H2O comes out and we have two monomers linked together by a covalent bond in this example across the oxygen. That's a dehydration synthesis reaction. It doesn't have to happen precisely like this, but as long as one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms are removed when two monomers are put together, that's dehydration synthesis. Dehydration means taking water out, and in fact, a water molecule's worth of atoms are removed in that reaction. The opposite of that is called hydrolysis. The word hydrolysis means to cut with water. And so if we take the polymer, dimer really, two monomers linked by a covalent bond, and add back in the two hydrogens and oxygen atoms in the form of water molecule, then we can reconstitute the component parts, the two individual monomers, and they'll have their OH groups intact again as their separate monomers. We'll see dehydration reactions and hydrolysis reactions quite often being two sides of a coin, whether it's we're building up something or taking it apart. We're going to see those two things happening all the time. In fact, the most common type of hydrolysis that we'll be talking about in this course is a hydrolysis of the energy-rich molecule ATP. So when ATP is combined with water, it's broken down into ADP and then 
inorganic phosphate molecule, and energy is released from that. We'll see that reaction over and over and over throughout all the physiology that we study in this course. An important concept that we need to keep in mind is the fact that energy is required for a lot of the reactions that we're going to see taking place in physiology. This sort of rec representation suggests that to get from the starting point of a reaction, say with the reactions book and worm, the energy we need to put those reactants together to make the final product of the word book worm is represented by this curve. Anything we can do to reduce the amount of energy necessary to get from the starting point to the end point of this reaction is going to make it more likely that the reaction will take place. And we'll usually use something called an enzyme to do that. So without an enzyme, there's quite a bit of energy required to even get the reaction started, and probably more than we could possibly use to get the reaction to even take place in the body. Enzymes are very important to make sure that chemical processes take place. Consider this question. When you feel that you've reached an answer, hit the next button to go into the next slide, which will reveal the correct answer.